Hello and welcome to another video from EarnPed.com. I am Stevie B. Happy to have you all with us today. Ah, fresh pot of coffee on and we are good to go. So I am back on Planet Arcadia. Uh, as you guys know, the Gold Rush event is going on. I am not personally participating. However, I do have a friend that is uh, competing that I've loaned out some of my gear to. So hopefully my friend wins because if they do, we've got a equity share going on. I didn't charge them up front to use any of my gear. However, there will be an equity split if they win, so let's hope that that happens. So I'm on Planet Arcadia, and I'm going to go somewhere that I usually don't go. So go with me, guys. I've got a reason for this. We're going to Arcadia Underground. So we go to the nearest teleporter. It can be any teleporter on Arcadia. We hit our little drop-down menu up here, and we select Arcadia Underground. We go to the one teleporter it will let us go to, and bam, we're in. Now, why do I stay away from the underground? That is a very good question. Most of you probably already know the answer. Whenever I get in, I'm going to get this little message that's going to pop up. I am entering a land area with a 5% hunting tax, 5% mining tax, and 2.5% uh, maximum fee based on market value for items that I purchase in shops. So I typically do not hunt in areas where it's taxed. I just don't do it as a general rule of thumb so today is kind of a unique situation i'll show you guys why here in a minute first of all let's check out the terminals in case you guys have never been here before so the cool thing is if you want storage there is extra storage here in the underground um, this counts as 500 item points of storage just like if you were on calypso and had 500 or Taloon and had 500 so if your storage is absolutely overflowing you can put stuff in the underground storage I generally do not simply for the fact that I will forget that it's here. Um, so I'm going to head over to this dot over here, which is Fire Crystal Teleporter. And we are going to do a little bit of hunting while I explain why we, re we are here. So first of all, let me turn the sound down a little bit for you guys. Um, that way you don't have to constantly hear my gun going off. So here at Fire Crystal Teleporter, we have one bananas. I call them one banana. I, I guess that's actually how you pronounce it is one banana. Wom banana. Gonna eat me a candy cane. Um, so one banana, one banana, whatever. A lovely bunch of coconuts. Um, there's these weird little turtle looking things that have their brains sticking out. So why are we here and why are we hunting them if it's a taxed area? That is a good question. So there are two mobs in the underground that I like to hunt. There is a third that I have not tried out yet. Um, the first one is one bananas. The second one is badgers. So one bananas are a little bit lower level. Badgers start at level 11. Uh, one bananas are at like level five through seven. Um, so most of the people that are watching this video, I know usually most of my audience is newer players or lower level players. Wom bananas are going to be something that you can grind out pretty easily. Uh, badgers are going to be a little bit more difficult. The reason I like badgers is because I've got my uh, limited earth shocker armor and I can actually kill them fast enough with an LR40 or LR45 with my reload speed that they never get anywhere near me. So the badgers can't hit me, which is one of the few times I actually get to use my uh, earth shocker armor. Very, very expensive, very limited armor. Uh, cannot be repaired, very, very valuable, and it increases your critical uh, damage output by quite a bit. So I don't really get a good chance to use it a lot. However, I can on Badger. I can't on one banana just because they run too fast. If I was using a much larger gun like an LR40 or LR45, I probably could because I would just be wiping these things left and right. I'm currently using a BC25, which is probably something that most of you are going to be in the general range for. Um, so why am I doing this? Well, if you saw my video the other day on me getting the Viceroy armor, then you know there's three upgrade missions. There's an adjusted mission, there's an improved mission, and there's a modified mission. To do each of those missions, you need nanites. You need two nanites per mission per armor piece. So you need 14 total adjusted nanites, 14 total improved nanites, 14 total modified nanites. So here's the problem. Everybody wants the adjusted nanites. They're very expensive. They're about 150 to 200 ped per nanite. 
uh, the improved are a little bit cheaper and the modified are a little bit cheaper still but the adjusted ones are the hard ones to get because they're freakishly expensive and remember you need 14 of these things so 14 times 20 bucks is quite a lot of money um, like two hundred eighty dollars so that's a ridiculous amount of money to be spending on an armor set especially an unlimited armor set that is soul bound that you just essentially turn in for TT value because you're going to be losing all that markup on those nanites now as I said in the videos if you're really wanting to go that route if you're really wanting to adjust it and then improve it and then modify it and you're trying to do this without just pissing away tons of money left and right um, you're going to have to try and find those nanites yourself well luckily the nanites are found here in the underground and guess what give those nanites ding 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 one bananas uh, also the badgers the badgers tend to be the thing that everybody flocks to because that's the thing that's the most well known to drop them however one bananas do as well um, actually I was here two or three days ago and I was finishing up the 10,000 kill point mission uh, the old mission back before we had codex I'd already done the 5,000 kill point mission to put it into perspective each one banana was about 10 points give or take so I'd done the 5,000 kill point mission and I was about 4,500 points into the 10,000 kill point mission. And I shot one right next to the teleporter to teleport out. And I got an adjusted nanite. So I have one of the 14 that I now need. Uh, that does not mean that it's going to be easy. That does not mean I'm going to get them that often. But I did manage to loot one already. So if you're going to be in the underground. And if you're going to be in a taxed area. The reason you would actually pay to hunt is for one of two reasons. For a mob that you cannot hunt anywhere else that is very very difficult to find uh, because you're wanting some kind of a reward from either a mission or codex or whatever or because it drops loot with freakishly freakishly high markup well obviously something that's got a one ped value that i can sell for 150 to 200 ped that's a pretty freakishly high markup now the problem is like i said it's a very 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 rare drop so the odds of me getting enough to actually make this a profitable hunt long term probably not very good that is why i prefer the badgers badgers do drop a little bit better loot the loot does have some markup whenever you manage to get it back to cali assuming you can get it back through the pvp zone without getting shot down um, so if you have a way to get your stuff to Cali and you can use higher level weapons uh, like an LR40, LR45, then honestly the Badgers are probably the way to go. One of the things that I do like about the one banana though that is going to make it even better for a lot of you uh, lower level or non-depot players is if you can grind these things out, the Codex rewards seem to be pretty freakishly good. Um, so just to give you guys an idea... I'm on rank 9, and the reward is going to be 2.4 ped. So that's that's really not bad compared to, uh, like, the Gold Rush mob, uh, 3.28 ped for rank 14. So, I mean, from what I've seen, and this is, I, I don't have numbers to put with this, I don't have anything other than just my basic intuition, but generally speaking, the one banana rewards seem to be slightly better for some reason when it comes to Codex. I have noticed that there are a few mobs here and there that the Codex rewards are actually way better than they should be. Um, I'm just going to kind of keep that information to myself, even though I just said it out loud for everybody to hear. Um, so... <laughs> If you're a low level or a non-depot player and you're wanting to not only maybe go for some markup and try a mob that you haven't tried before or go after those adjusted nanites if you can, but also get some really good codex rewards, then one banana is definitely something you might want to check out. You'll also notice they drop a ton of these treasure map things. Those treasure maps can be turned in for keys for some instance here on Arcadia. Um, I'm sure it's something that most OG Arcadia players are very familiar with. I've never traded them and I've never done any of those instances. So I might make a video about that in the very near future. But needless to say, if you're going to be in a land area where you're going to be paying tax, then the one that I'm willing to go for is Arcadia Underground with either the One Bananas or the Badgers. And preferably the Badgers, but so far the One Bananas have treated me a little bit better. So I'm going to stick with them and hope I can grab a couple more Nanites. 
Um, you also might get different nanites in different orders. So remember, the modified and the improved are worth less than the adjusted. Do not be surprised if you find that a mob that drops the adjusted also drops the improved or the modified or all three, or it could only drop one of three. Um, I fully expect that I will harvest plenty of modified and improved nanites before I ever get a complete set of the adjusted nanites ready to go. So that is kind of my overview of why I'm in the underground, why I'm hunting the Wamba Nanas, and who knows, maybe I'll even grab an adjusted nanite before this video is over to show you guys. It was really cool. It, when it popped up, I actually had to stare at it for a second to be sure I was reading it right. You guys will also notice that I don't use the loot window. I just have it scroll over on my left-hand side and tell me what loot I got. That's because I like the loot window. I think it's really cool. I like being able to see when a limited or unlimited item pops up in my loot window. The problem is the loot window fills up so quickly with just shrapnel and oils and all kinds of other stuff that there's been plenty of times that there was something that popped up and I wasn't actually able to see it. Um, I'm a little bit more apt to actually see what I'm looting if I'm looking at it this way, which is why I do that. Um, one thing to mention, and I did think this was pretty cool, these one bananas do drop limited melee amplifiers. So I've got like three melee one amplifiers that are all limited. Now there are unlimited versions out there. You're not going to loot an unlimited one from these guys, but you can loot the limited ones. So if you're doing some low level melee uh, skilling as well, you might want to do these one bananas first and maybe grab you a couple of those limited uh, melee one amps before you go out for your next melee skilling run. So somebody asked me earlier today, they said, have you been to Zykeon lately? Did they nerf how Zykeon works for grinding out free defense skills? Uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of people here. I don't think they nerfed it. Um, this is something I have not personally checked in a while, but every time I do go check, everything still works the same way it did when I very first started playing. And the reason I think they haven't nerfed it is because it would essentially require an overhaul of the way the game mechanics and the system function as a whole. To fix... The way you can skill defense at Zykeon essentially has to fix how the leveling system works, how the skilling system works, and how high level the mobs there are, uh, which is not something that the team at Mind Dark is likely to put a lot of time and effort into, because what's the payout for them? There isn't one. Their time is better used doing other things, right? Um, the reason I think that so few people are at Zykeon these days is twofold. Number one, it is not fun. It, it is very, very boring. It is something you have to really, really be somebody into punishing yourself in, in order to want to do that long term. Hey, adjusted nanite right there. Sweet. See, told you guys we'd probably get one before the end of the video. Nice. So now I've got two off one bananas. One bananas are my new best friends. Um, so you, you guys have to keep in mind when I first started... I died at Zykeon almost 250,000 times, almost a quarter of a million times. I'm, that's rough estimate. Um, that is something that not a lot of people are willing to do. That is the kind of thing that not a lot of people are really willing to put in the effort for. You almost have to be somewhat psychotic to do that, right? Um, so that is one thing. Number two is since we do now have Codex, Codex makes it so much easier to skill defense, it's unreal. Um, anytime that I get Codex Rewards, I go straight for the same three. I go for either Athletics, um, Courage, or Evade. And the reason I do that is because they have a huge, huge, huge effect on your defense skills. And if you do that over and over, you're going to get a lot of defense skills very, very quickly. And that's very, very quickly going to make Zykeon not worth it. Um, so it's more fun to go hunting. You could be out there hunting Exosaur Young. You could be at uh, Icarus, Icky Icky Icarus, where people start hunting Burklide and uh, the Blue Buffalo things, whatever they're called. And in very short order, you're going to have enough Codex rewards that you're actually going to not really need the defense skills from Zykeon. Um, back when I started playing, there was no Codex. All punies counted the same. There was a, a kill point mission for punies. Well, now, with Codex, it's by what race they are. So, Burklight are one Codex, the Blue Buffalo are another, 
and then if you go a little bit further out um, there's another mob out there that's only like level two or three so you can get all the way through you know rank 10 15 even 20 on codex on three different mobs without ever leaving icarus well if you can do that and if you know which skills like athletics and courage and evade that you need over and over and over again you're going to build your evader level up pretty freakishly quickly um, so I think it's just a mixture of it's boring, it's not fun to do, it does still work, but with Codex there's ways to actually play the game and have fun and enjoy it uh, while keeping your cost minimum that still grow your evader through the roof. So here it is in all of its splendor guys, the adjusted nanite. So first of all notice that it, if we go to the main tab it says warning this item can be looted in PvP areas. That means if you were to take this through PvP space and get shot down it could be looted from you. Check out the markup. Markup is roughly a uh, uh, 15 to 16 thousand percent. So you're looking at about 150 to 160 ped per nanite. Um, so quite quite expensive. Nanites are microscopic sized nanomachines that operate together to modify and alter the complete structure of any material considered an extremely rare resource. So this is it guys, this is what you need in order to adjust the Viceroy armor, uh, which is the first step on the chain. So now that I've got two of the 14 I need, remember it takes two per armor part, I could actually go and I could adjust one of my pieces to my armor. Now ideally I would like to do the whole thing together, I would like to adjust the whole set at once, improve the whole set at once, modify the whole set at once. That's not really super feasible. <laughs> it's not super feasible for a lot of reasons and a lot of people. If you are trying to do this, it might be something where you want to come out here and you want to grind out some one bananas and you want to grind out some badgers and you want to try and loot some of them yourself. And it might be one of those things where instead of trying to collect them all at once, you might just decide to do one armor piece here, one armor piece there with the goal of having a complete set of modified armor at the end of, let's say, a, a year period or a two year period. Again, very, very expensive. And again, it is soul bound, so it's not like you're ever going to get that markup back. Unfortunately, once that markup is spent, it is spent. But it could well be worth it. Now, one of the reasons that I put this off for so long is the rings that I usually wear, my event rings. Um, they give me buffs that are better than the armor, even once it is modified. However, if you don't have an event ring, or if you think you might get rid of your event rings at some point in the future, then obviously the armor is nice to have. Um, there would be a small, small, like 2 to 3% gain I could get by having the armor fully modified, and uh, the, the increased critical chance would definitely help a little bit, but we're talking a whole lot of cost for not a whole lot of reward. Now, if I did not have those rings, obviously it would be a great investment. One of the reasons I keep having to stop and heal is because I don't have the rings on at the moment. As I said, one of my friends is running Gold Rush, so I loan them some of my gear, which includes my rings. So I don't have my usual lifesteal, uh, I don't have my usual reload speed, I don't have my usual run speed. And to, to be quite honest, guys, if you do have event rings, if you are one of the people lucky enough to have that kind of an investment in the game, take them off now and then. Uh, take them off and go back to seeing what it's like to play without any kind of special buffs. This game is much, much, much more difficult to play without any buffs. Um, you run so much faster with event rings on that it feels like you're just stopped to a crawl when you don't have them. Uh, if you have life still, then you almost forget what fapping is like sometimes. And the reload speed makes hunting so much faster. So to actually take them off and play without them for once, it feels a little bit weird, but I like to do that every now and then because it reminds me of what the game is really like without stuff like that. Um, you, the, the difference is just absolutely mind-boggling. So guys, I'm going to leave it right there for today. Luckily, we did manage to loot one of the adjusted nanites. I didn't figure we'd get two in the same video. But obviously, uh, my information's good. I'm not telling you they drop from one bananas and they don't. You saw it happen live. So if you are wanting to adjust your Viceroy armor, or if you're just wanting to look for something a little bit different to hunt with some decent codex rewards that could potentially have some good markup loot, 
um, adjusted nanites might be the way to go for you. The rest of the loot that these guys drop isn't great, but like I said, that's why I prefer the badgers, although the badgers haven't given me an adjusted nanite yet, so I'm kind of leaning towards the womb bananas. So guys, from earnpad.com, I've been Stevie B. Smack, smack, sip, sip, F the haters. Thank you for joining me today in the Arcadia Underground, and we will see you with more content very, very soon. Till then, everybody take care, and have a great one, Stevie's. Thanks for all the support, guys.